In today's video, I wanna show you a project that I was working on. It's a simple blog website, which has this landing page area that is getting dynamic content from Strapi, a headless CMS, which I love. If you're surprised by that, I don't know what to tell you. And we have our blog section here that has our blog post, our search, our pagination. You could click on each individual blog post to load the content. And we also have a sign-in example of how to log in as a user and show you how to protect your routes with a dashboard. Now, one thing that I'm gonna say about this project, it is a starter demo project, so it's not a completed project. It's for you to jumpstart your own project and take it the rest of the way, but I wanted to share the code with you. I wanted to show you how to set this up locally. So if you're learning Next.js 15 and want an example project, or you want to have something that you could use to jumpstart your own blog website, here is the project for you. Our front end is powered by Next.js and for our back end to manage our content, we're using Strapi that allows you to easily manage your content anywhere with this amazing dashboard area that you don't have to build yourself. And for our styling, I am using ShadCN UI components and to make things easier for this particular project, I used a page builder called Reweb that allowed me to quickly get started with this project without having to spend too much time by building out the front end CSS. And to get started with the project, I'll make sure to link to the repo in the description below, but you can see the readme file that covers all the basic details. And more importantly, when you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the two steps that you need to get started. Number one, we're gonna clone our project. And number two, we're gonna run our setup script. So let's go ahead, click on the code button, and I'm gonna say HTTP, copy the command. And in the terminal, I'm gonna type get clone, add the link, and I'm going to call it Strapi Project. Click Enter. It's gonna go ahead and clone our repo. So let's CD into our Strapi Project and do LS. Here you could see that we have our Next.js frontend, our Strapi backend. We have a seed data, which will allow you to seed data for your project, make things much easier. And inside our package JSON file, I have this dandy setup script that will allow you to set up the project quickly. So let's clear the screen and let's type in yarn setup to install all the dependencies and set up our project. This will also import the data. And once everything is done to start both your front end and your back end, you would just run yarn dev. Now, before heading to our front end, we do wanna go into our strappy admin and this window should pop up for you automatically. If it doesn't, you could just navigate to localhost 1337 and go ahead and create your first admin user. Let's see my email, paul.bratslavsky at strapi.io and secure password is monkey1234. So make sure that you are using a secure password even if you're playing locally. And once you are logged in, you're going to be greeted by this dashboard. If you click this content manager, you're going to see that we actually have our content available here. And if you take a look at our global, you see that our top navigation is actually coming from our Strapi admin, as well as our landing page. And we'll take a look at this in more detail in future videos. But here you could see that we have our sections that correlate to our Next.js frontend. For instance, this is our hero section. You could see Next15 and Strapi5. You could see that we have our image, our button links. So now that we know that our backend is running, if we navigate to localhost 3000, we're going to see our content rendered via our Next.js application. So all the data that you see here, including our blog post, is managed by our Strapi instance. For instance, if we go to post, you could see I have three blog posts here. You could see the content, and this is what is being delivered to our Next.js application which is pretty awesome. So I opened up the project in my code editor and here we could see that we have our backend, which is our Strapi application. And this is our frontend, which is built by Next.js. So today we're gonna to explore just some of the basic features of the frontend application. And if we take a look here, we start inside the source folder where we have our app, which is we store all of our routing, our components that I created for this project. And we have a lib where here I have a couple of different functions. And the most important functions is this fetch function 
which I created to use to query the data from my Strapi endpoint. So whenever I want to make a call to Strapi to get the data, I am using this fetch data, which takes a string to the URL path that or endpoint that I want to call. And if it's a private route and you provide an auth token, it will go ahead and create that authorized request. So now let's jump in to our app folder and look at the structure. And in the root of our project, we have our layout, our page.tsx file and an error. So whenever something happens, we will default to this error boundary that will catch all the errors when something goes wrong. Before moving to the rest of the folders, let's take a look at our layout.tsx file. Our layout.tsx file is responsible for being the root layout for our project. And this is a good place to put in your header and your footer. We are also getting our header and footer data from our Strapi application. I am using React server components that allow me to query my data directly inside my React component. Above here, I'm calling a sync function. I called it a loader because for me, that's what I like. And I'm using that fetch data util function that I showed you where I am that I'm importing from our library. And here I am saying, here's the URL path of our Strapi endpoint that I want to fetch the data, specifying the things that I want to query, and I'm getting that data from my Strapi application. So in my Strapi project, if I go to my content manager, you could see that we have our global page or content type, which is responsible for our navigation in Strapi under users and permissions on the roles. If we go to public, I gave permission to allow us this find API endpoint. So if you could see, this is where that endpoint is coming from. And if you take a look in the Next.js application, that is exactly the endpoint I am calling, which is going ahead and getting the data for our top navigation footer. And I'm passing that data into our components. So now let's take a look at our page.tsx file. This page is responsible for our landing page or our index page or our homepage route. If we take a look at our homepage, we see our hero section, our heading, our features, and the rest of our content, including our pricing page. In Strapi, we could find this under our single type landing page. If you take a look at the landing page, we have our website content. Each block that I created in Strapi correlates to a Next.js component. So when we query this data in our Next.js application, I'm making a call to our landing page endpoint. I'm querying the data that I want. And I'll share a good resource in the description if you're wondering how querying in Strapi works. But once we get our data, we are getting our blocks from Strapi so here you could see our blocks. We have seven of them. And I have a block render function, which basically checks our response. Hey, if there's a layout that hero, make sure you return the hero component and so on. So what is happening, I'm iterating through my response and I'm rendering all the appropriate blocks. For instance, this is the hero section. If I decided to move this hero section all the way to the bottom and click publish and refresh my Next.js application, notice how that hero section was moved to the bottom, which is pretty cool. This allows your content managers or editors to be able to manage the content without you having to do anything as a developer which is pretty cool. As a developer, I don't want to manage content. I just want to build the project. And so I moved everything back. I saved. So now if I refresh, notice our hero section is back to the top again. Oh my God, this video is getting more longer than it has to be. I just wanted to share this Next.js and Strapi 5 project that I was working on and give you a code example that you could use in whatever ways that you like. We took a look how to set up the project locally. We looked at one basic example of fetching our data and rendering that data to our landing page. And again, you now have the code running locally on your computer and you could take a look. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments or let me know of other future topics that you want me to cover. If you're ever wondering who is this channel sponsored by, this channel is sponsored by my projects that I always try to finish someday. And my newest project that I've been working on is called, it's 
updating my personal website to make it more user friendly to you guys and girls, right? So coding after 30 now, I basically created this LMS with Remix and Strappy. And of course I will make more content around it, but you could go ahead here. You could check out some of the courses that we have as I create courses. I'm going to put them here. What courses I'm doing right now, right now I'm going to be working on building a same project with three different frameworks. We're talking about Astro, Remix and Next.js and all of our backend is going to be powered by Strappy 5. So we're going to learn about Strappy. We're going to learn about Astro. We're going to learn about Remix. We're going to learn about Next. And to give you a better experience of interaction Interacting with my videos, I created, and I'm still working on it. So if you find any bugs, let me know. I'm sure there's many. I created this LMS. So if you click on view course, it will let you to sign in. This will always be free. All the courses on here is gonna be free. Uh, by signing in, it just allows you to save the lessons to your liked lessons that you could watch later. But I have this test user hard coded. So if you don't want to like create your own account, you don't have to, you just click sign in. It's gonna go ahead and take you to your dashboard where you could select the course, which will showcase the course that you have. If you click on view course, it's gonna go ahead and show you the courses. Right now, I'm still making more courses in the process. You will see the video, you will have the basic description and notes. On the right here, you're going to see the course notes with all the appropriate code snippets. So you're never gonna be missing things that I talk about in the video. You could drag stuff and move stuff around to kind of have a better user experience. So this is what this channel is brought to you by, by my own whole projects, but hopefully you will enjoy them as much as I enjoy building them. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.